Good morning and Salam Malaysia Madani everyone. Thank you for joining us on the first episode of the Road to Innovation Nation podcast. As the head of ministry responsible for advancing science technology innovation in Malaysia, the minister has been at the forefront of Malaysia's effort to drive technological innovation and promote a thriving startup ecosystem. Today, we have the honor of having the Minister of Science, Technology and Innovation, YB Tuan Chang Li Kang, with us. Thank you for joining us, YB Minister. Hi. In this episode, we will delve into the Minister's views on the current state of technology in Malaysia, the future of the industry, as well as the Ministry's initiatives to drive growth in this area. YB Chang, it has been almost half a year since you as the Minister of Mosti. Not just me, I believe the viewers and listeners of this podcast would like to know, since you helmed the position of Minister of Mosti back in December 2022, what is the highlight of being in this seat? Uh, thank you, Nina. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, in fact, uh, I'm still picking up. <laughs> I, uh, I'm on a learning curve. and um, But I think um, since I, I have taken over, I mean, since I uh, took over uh, office, I think um, the highlight will be uh, my the, the opportunity to uh, work with uh, government government agencies and also collaboration with uh, private sector organization in uh, uh, to promote innovation and also uh, to drive economic growth, especially to attract um, uh, technology related investor mm -hmm. to come to Malaysia, and uh, of course. Uh, I'm also very excited, in fact, uh, with all the um, new new technology. Uh, every day is a every, every day is a new day, and everything is an eye opener to me. So, uh, well, I, I'm still picking up, but uh, uh, at the same time, I'm very happy to um, collaborate with all the agencies and also uh, private sectors uh, to promote uh, science, technology, and innovation. Okay. In your opinion, what is the most exciting technological advancement happening right now and why? I think uh, one of the uh, interesting one would be uh, artificial intelligence okay. uh, yeah, and also machine learning. Uh, uh, is uh, very um, uh, fascinating to me and uh, this technology can really help our uh, uh, industry to, to grow and uh, uh, all these uh, application, I think uh, it will be uh, uh, future proof. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you look at um, how we can use uh, AI and also machine learning uh, in terms of uh, autonomous driving, uh, uh, precision medicine, precision farming, mm -hmm. I think uh, this, um, this technology would really help us in the future. AI is the future. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. AI, machine learning. <laughs> so other than AI, do you have any personal favorite of which technology you like most? Uh, I would, I mean, everything is very uh, exciting to me. Yeah. Uh, but uh, personally, I think uh, besides AI, I also, I'm very interested in uh, uh, the development of uh, uh, renewable energy, especially on hydrogen. Uh, uh, I think um, hydrogen would be the future also. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we'll we'll now move forward to the next segment. Uh, in this next segment, we'll be discussing the role and future direction of Mosti through a series of questions. So YB, how do you envision making Mosti more reachable and accessible to the public, so that they can better understand and appreciate the impact of STI? Uh, I think um, um, visibility is very important uh, okay. because. Uh, uh, science technology has always been very uh, uh, important uh, sector, but uh, I, uh, public visibility uh, is a bit relatively low. Mm. So I think uh, my I, I need to put in more effort to make science, technology, and innovation more visible to the public. Uh, it will be uh, so that um, we can we can have more public engagement. So uh, through social media town hall with stakeholders and also uh, uh, various channels uh, like podcasts like this. <laughs> <laughs> I think it will really help us uh, in uh, getting more public engagement and also uh, public awareness in uh, science, technology and innovation. Okay, so public awareness yep. is the... Okay. I, I, I can give you an example because uh, um, people are not very um, uh, interested in science community. Although uh, science is so... Uh, 
closely related to our daily life mm -hmm. but uh, well we don't know who is the I mean who are the prominent scientists in Malaysia <laughs> yeah. so I, I think uh, slowly uh, we need to um, introduce uh, the science community to the public uh, the science community uh, which is so useful and uh, so that, that uh, so useful to the society but uh, Unfortunately, um, not very visible in the public. So we uh, we need to we need to improve this, uh, and also of course uh, we we'll work with, work together with all our agencies um, to have more pr uh, promotion about science, technology, and innovation. For instance, uh, Minggu Science Negara and Techlimpek, mm -hmm. etc. Yeah. Okay. So um, technology and innovation are the most critical factors contributing to the economic growth and well-being of the community. How does MOSTI ensure that the benefits of technological advancements are accessible to all citizens, including those in rural areas or with lower incomes? Yeah, uh, I think technology uh, is only meaningful if uh, it could help our um, uh, underprivileged uh, community. Right. So uh, I, I'm also trying um, to uh, use science and technology to uh, help our, um, uh, I would say, um, remote community, like uh, for instance, uh, communities in Sabah and Sarawak, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, Pedalaman, and also uh, Oransli community. So we are also thinking of uh, um, using the ex existing um, technologies to help them to to get um, access to basic uh, amenities like. Um, um, uh, water, clean water, mm -hmm. uh, electricity, or internet. So uh, we are we are trying to do that. Uh, that and there are uh, various of technologies that we can use to help this uh, community. And uh, of course, at the same time, we also need to promote science, uh, SDI, uh, among um, the uh, rural, rural folks, because uh, uh, we need to close the gap between. Uh, Urban and also uh, rural yeah. um, community. So uh, one of the one of the initiatives that we are taking is to uh, set up uh, Ruang Daya Chipta. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it's like a maker's lab. You oh, see, okay, right. yeah, it's yeah. like a maker's lab. Uh, mini mini um, uh, science center. Mm -hmm. So uh, we we are building up. I Maybe mean, I I just launched one. I just launched one in uh, Manong Perak. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Right. Uh, the Kuala Kangsa area. So, um, so we, we just need a place, yep. and then uh, our agency will come. Uh, mm -hmm. The our uh, agency pelaksana is Yim, uh, Yayasan Innovasi Malaysia, and uh, we'll renovate the whole thing, and then uh, we'll put in um, some technologies um, uh, showcase. For instance, uh, drones, uh, 3D printers, robotic. Um, uh, even a studio and this is accessible to the public accessible yeah yeah oh, okay. definitely i mean 100 percent free oh, uh, okay. and it is for the public um for, for the local community in oh. fact uh, so we are planning to build 10 uh, mm. in this year okay. uh, we just launched one and then uh, we are going to build more uh, and uh, we hope this initiative uh, can help us uh, promote um, science technology and innovation among um, uh, Rural community. Ah, okay. Yeah. So these are the efforts, some of the efforts to, to yeah. help the underserved and underprivileged. Yeah. And um, given that our budget for R and D is currently smaller relatively to other developed countries, is there a plan to advocate for a larger R and D budget in the future? Well, of course. Uh, 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 when we talk about allocation, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, it, it, there's always not enough. You see, uh, but we understand because uh, we we need to juggle. And we have very uh, scarce resources. Mm. Uh, of course, we hope uh, our um, uh, R&D fund, uh, we can have more. I mean, uh, the good uh, GRD. Uh, but uh, at the same time, we also need to understand the uh, financial constraint that uh, we are facing. Uh, so um, we cannot rely entirely on the government, especially okay. on uh, R&D. Uh, so besides uh, um, some... Um, allocation or, or, or fund uh, injection from the government, mm -hmm. we need to also work on other um, uh, other initiatives. Uh, uh, for instance, uh, Malaysia Science Endowment. 
uh, I think this is a very good and a very important uh, initiative uh, because um, if we keep going like this, I mean, uh, we, we keep uh, expecting government to pump in money for R&D, I think it's not uh, realistic. I mean, because even even other countries also, uh, we are not, I mean, though the science community uh, in their countries uh, are not um, uh, relying entirely on the government. Yeah. So we need a collaboration from the private sector, from the international community mm -hmm. to help us uh, set up this fund. Uh, and to help us uh, uh, enhance our effort in uh, 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 science, no, uh, research and development. So find to find a more sustainable approach to get yeah, yeah, more funding yeah. here. Uh, I mean, sustainability is very important yeah. because otherwise you just spend and then you don't see anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, with food security being a hot topic lately, do you think Malaysia will adopt any specific technologies like AI to address it? Yeah, uh, of course, AI uh, plays a very important role uh, because uh, nowadays when we talk about uh, um, farming, uh, we are still um, in Malaysia. We are still very uh, uh, um, we are still talking about conventional farming, uh, but in fact, in other advanced country, people are using AI. Uh, people are using machine learning to to uh, help them manage their f uh, the farm. Mm -hmm. We call that uh, precision farming. Yep. So uh, with uh, AI. With the space technology, uh, we 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 know how much uh, exactly how much we need to water the plant, how much fertilizer we we need to use on the plant, so that uh, no wastage and also uh, is a con uh, is environmental friendly. Uh, so AI is very important. In fact, uh, we are working with uh, a few uh, private farms mm -hmm. uh, adopting this AI AI technology with the help of uh, some of our agencies uh, like Nano Malaysia. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we we I just visited the farm, uh, a smart farm. Okay, uh, where is this? Yeah, in Manong. In also. Manong as well. Yeah, yeah okay, in Manong yeah. as well. Uh, and uh, it's very it, it is very impressive. In fact, a uh, very small piece of land, uh, let, uh, only about a quarter of uh, a quarter acre, uh, but the uh, production is huge and oh. also uh, purely organic. Why are they, uh, why are they farming? Uh, kind of vegetables. Oh, vegetables, mostly and vegetables. And also at the same time, they are railing uh, fish, oh, okay. fishes. Yeah. So uh, yeah. very impressive. Uh, if we if we can, I mean, uh, if our farmers can adopt uh, this kind of uh, technologies, mm -hmm. uh, I think we can uh, uh, not to say settle, but uh, more or less uh, we can um, uh, improve the situation uh, circumstances now on on uh, food security. Okay. Thank you, Ruby. Um, can you share any recent collaborations or partnerships uh, your ministry has established with international organizations or foreign governments? Uh, government, uh, so far, um, I mean, uh, after, after I took over, uh, I, I signed an MOU with mm -hmm. uh, the Spain government, uh, with my counterpart uh, in the Spain uh, government, uh, the Science and Technology Ministry, ministry of Science and Technology. Uh, um, Besides that, um, uh, through agency, uh, we signed uh, MOU. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, uh, uh, just um, recently, uh, Maranti signed an MOU with uh, TASTA, uh, the biggest incubator um, uh, incubators in startup in incubators in China. TASTA. TASTA, yeah, and, and also um, uh, Nano Malaysia. Uh, sign uh, an MOU with the Nanopolis in Shuzhou, mm -hmm. uh, NIBM, National Institute of Biotechnology Malaysia, mm -hmm. sign an MOU uh, with a local company and um, Pfizer on um, uh, human vaccine development. So we have uh, various um, similar collaborations with uh, international parties. Okay, exploring the challenges and opportunities in developing STI talent is more critical than ever. Moving on, YB, what are your thoughts on Malaysia's startup ecosystem following Mosti's recent town hall? Is there room for improvement to create a more vibrant ecosystem? Yeah, of course, uh, definitely <laughs> there are room of uh, room for improvement. Uh, I've spoken to uh, some uh, uh, startups mm -hmm. uh, through the um, town hall yep. uh, and. Um, I'm very glad to see so many talents and also uh, uh, very gifted, gifted uh, startups. Uh, but of course, uh, we need to improve from our our end. 
um, uh, we need to improve um, the access to uh, funding, okay. um, to uh, access to grant because uh, uh, there are still uh, a lot of um, talented startups that uh, they do not know uh, we have um, certain programs for uh. them. So uh, I think we need to uh, work on it. Uh, and also, um, <coughs> we need to build like uh, we call talent pipelines. Uh, we need to prepare uh, talent for these uh, startups. And also, um, uh, we have, uh, for, for instance, uh, training programs, mentorship programs. We, we need to prepare talents for our startup. Uh, so that um, they won't uh, they won't uh, face this uh, talent shortage. I mean, uh, we we know how difficult to to set up a startup, yeah. you see. And then if um, they they do not have enough uh, talent supply, then mm-hmm. they would they will face um, more issues. So we hope to help them uh, in terms of uh, um, talent talents preparation, and also at the same time uh, we need to create more uh, market opportunities. Um, uh, in order to do that, I think government need to uh, uh, make a lot of efforts, uh, especially on the p- procurement part, uh, mm-hmm. because uh, uh, we, we need um, government to use some of the products of our startup to show confidence in these products. And uh, our startup need that. And uh, our government should uh, play a role in that. Uh, say, for instance, create a green lane for, for our um, startup like especially uh, homegrown technology so when government needs to use certain technology they will look for uh, the uh, technology uh, developed by local startup instead of uh, developed by an MNC I mean of course uh, uh, MNC they are more uh, competitive in terms in terms of price because of economy of skills but uh, I think the government should also play a role in helping our startup mm-hmm. by uh, using the technology, uh, the homegrown, yeah, products. the homegrown products, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, do you believe that Malaysia can move beyond being a technology consumer and become a technology producer innovator? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, slowly but surely. Slowly. <laughs> yeah. What's your projection? Yeah, like because uh, yeah. I, I think um, uh, we we are now seeing a lot of uh, uh, technologies advancement, mm-hmm. uh, and we also see the importance of uh, technology. Uh, of course, we, we can't be 100% uh, um, 100% uh, using our own technology because uh, science technology are very borderless. That's right. Uh, right. Yeah. So, we, I mean, we still need to use uh, certain technologies from certain countries. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, we hope uh, we could increase our participation in creating more uh, technologies. Uh, instead of just a user. So mm-hmm. I think R&D is very important. The ecosystem is also very important because uh, if you have good R&D but you can't commercialize, uh, it will be a problem also. Uh, and then uh, if you have a good idea but you do not have enough talent, we will have problem also. <laughs> so uh, everything has to move simultaneously. Yeah, that's uh, right. So that is, our <laughs> that, that is the challenge. Uh, yes. Those are the challenges uh, we are facing. So what are the strategies that uh, Mosti have done in place to address the issue of brain drain? Oh, okay. Speaking it's, uh, of talent, yeah. Chicken and egg issue yeah. because uh, uh, when you talk to uh, talents, they'll say, well, oh, you're only paying so little. So you you pay peanut, you get monkeys. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> but when you talk to the industry, uh, industry say, well, I have to fork out money to uh-huh. uh, give additional training because uh, the, I mean, um, uh, the graduates they are not ready for the industry mm. when they when they graduated from the universities so uh, both both of them have uh, a valid argument yeah. but uh, I, I think um, instead of arguing on that uh, we should um, make the market bigger uh, I think one of the problems that our talents are facing uh, besides uh, low wages uh, also um, they have limited choices uh, for instance mm. um, they can only go to certain area. Uh, I mean, I, I, I will say because of the um, uh, industry, mm-hmm. that uh, industry uh, ecosystem uh, we are having now, uh, a lot of these industries, uh, the, the current industries, uh, they are um, uh, labor intensive. Okay. So they are labor intensive. And then the demand for high skilled workers are lower, uh-huh. relatively lower. So uh, our high skilled worker, uh, or our um, um, graduates, 
they have very limited choice and yeah. uh, not not many They're places. Overqualified. Yeah, overqualified. Yeah. Uh, and also uh, because of the demand is low, mm-hmm. so the wages are low. Yeah, ah, yeah, it, uh, see, yeah. See. So it, it, it's a cycle. So I think now uh, we should, uh, on one hand, we need to uh, increase the demand of uh, high skilled worker mm-hmm. by uh, attracting more capital intensive technology intensive uh, investor to malaysia mm-hmm. so that uh, the, to open up the demand for high skilled workers uh, at the same time we should also encourage our existing uh, uh, industry uh, for, uh, sme for instance uh, uh, farmers you know uh, to adopt more technologies uh, so that uh, that will also on one hand uh, you decrease uh, the or reduce the demand for um, uh, labor intensive work, labor intensive jobs, but uh, uh, on the other hand, also we increase the demand for high skill high skill uh, jobs, uh, because uh, I give you an example. Uh, if you transform your farm into a, a smart farm, yeah, uh, you so you have all these sensors and you you don't need as many workers as you you are using now, mm-hmm. but at the same time you you would need one or two. Uh, engineer software engineer or high skilled worker, yeah, high skilled workers yeah. to manage your system uh-huh. so on one hand reducing the the uh, demand of um, um, labor intensive jobs right. but on the other hand you are increasing demand for high skilled workers mm-hmm. so uh, we ne- we need to uh, do i mean we need to work hand in hand with the industry uh, encourage them to en- uh, adopt more technologies uh, uh, at the same time we also need to uh, we need we need to pull our academic, um, the the universities, uh, together with uh, industry players, uh, so that um, the syllabus in the university um, um, can be more um, uh, industry driven, yeah. uh, so that uh, our graduates are ready. I mean, once they are graduated from the university, uh, they are ready for the industry. So straight away they can blend into the workforce mm-hmm. I- instead of having another round of training, you know. Yeah. And then then the industry will tell you, oh, I need to fork out money for additional training. They are not prepared, so I cannot give uh, high wages. So, so we need to we need to um, like we have a multi multi dimensional uh, <laughs> strategy, multi prong strategies to settle this uh, 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 this issue. This brain drain issue. Yeah, yeah. So. Um so what what are the initiatives that are done to to solve that brain drain like what 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 are the examples that you can give well yeah, uh yeah. I just went to China with uh, the prime minister uh-huh. and uh i mean this round uh, we are we are i mean of course we we got uh, um, a lot of commitments from the china investors and uh, almost all of them uh i mean uh, are technology technology related. Yeah. And uh, not not um, labor intensive, so this is one of uh, I mean the, one of the efforts that uh, we are putting in. Mm-hmm. At the same time, we need to talk to uh, uh, our higher education mm-hmm. uh, ministry um, to work with the industry. So um, basically, we are just I mean we are barely uh, barely five months I think <laughs> yeah uh, in the yeah. office. So uh, we need to work more uh, on this. Okay. So before we end this session, YB, what advice can you give to young Malaysians interested in pursuing a career in science or technology? Well, I, I think uh, science and technology uh, uh, is the future, uh, not only for the country, but also for the uh, I mean, entire world. Mm-hmm. Uh, because uh, when you look at other countries, um, uh, they are putting emphasis uh, uh, emphasis on uh, they are putting emphasis on uh, science and technology uh, since their kids are young, very young, <laughs> uh, primary school. So uh, we are uh, a bit slow in uh, picking up, um, but uh, it's never it's never too late. And uh, I will say um, science and technology uh, have a bright future. Uh, so if they are interested, please by all means. Uh, the government is going to support and the government is going to uh, uh, promote uh, STI uh, uh, in years to come. And uh, if if they are still not convinced, uh, look at MOSTI. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, MOSTI is very important, uh, but 
if you, I mean, politically, if you look at every res uh, reshuffle or cabinet restructure, uh, mostly is always there. Why? Because science technology is very important. So uh, if they're interested, well, by all means, because we need, we need science and technology uh, um, talents. And uh, by 2030, uh, we hope, uh, remember, we wish to be a, a, a techno technology high-tech nation, mm -hmm. uh, high-income nation, and by then, we will need a lot of uh, science and technology talents. So uh, they will be very, um, very much needed yeah, in the future. Thank you. High demand. Yeah. High demand. Thank you so much, YB Tuan Chiang Li Kang. As we have heard from our esteemed guest, this podcast has provided you with valuable insights and ideas on how we can work together to build a stronger and more prosperous future for Malaysia, especially related to the STI ecosystem. Thank you again for tuning in, and we look forward to having you with us on our next episode. Thank you. Thank you. Ha ha ha.